Hi, today's talk is on mercy, love, and power. Let's look at the law, the Ten Commandments, from a different vantage point today, from the vantage point of faith and mercy. The Ten Commandments not only reflect the law, but they reflect God's character. They're who He is. And I don't know, try as you might, try as I might, it's really hard for me to act like God. So, but, it, it mirrors to us what, what it is that he would like it to look like, what it is we're supposed to end up like, okay? And God gave us that law absolutely knowing that a shadow of a doubt that we would not keep it, knowing that we would not, that we would war with him, that we would bargain with him, that we would do pieces of it and say, well, I don't believe in that, I'm not going to do that one. He already knew all that stuff in the beginning, and he knew one more thing besides that. He knew that we could not follow the Ten Commandments or any part of his character because of the law of sin that dwells inside of us happened at the Garden of Eden. He knew all this in advance. And he still, this is where faith comes in, he still, or mercy comes in, sorry, um, in the fact that he knew that it couldn't happen and he made a way by faith for us to be able to be with him forever, for us to be able to do the things that were in his character through him. Let's look at it kind of this way. Let's, let's come aside and look at the gifts of the Spirit, uh, fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. These, if you think about it for a minute, um, being patient is definitely a God thing. It's something that I don't do well without, and maybe you do, but um, most of us have to work really, really hard, even in our flesh, to get patience and long-suffering and, which are the same thing, but kindness and goodness. And we can do those things for little bits of time, but to be able to have that be our character, that's kind of a different story. And we need something beyond what we have for that. And so he gave them to us as fruits, fruits of his spirit, his being, his connectedness in us, that he does in us what we cannot do for ourselves. They're evidence of his power growing inside of us, making us like him. The Bible says that when Jesus comes to get us, we will look like him, we will be like him, we will have that character. Um, he, like I said, he, his spirit fights the battle of the flesh in us. It's not out there, it's right here. Um, that was the same way it was with Jesus. The Bible says he humbled himself and came and walked among us in love, displaying for us to see the law and the character of the Father. And he didn't do it in his own flesh because he didn't, he opted not to do it all. I know that he had, um, he had God power, he, well, he is God, but he didn't do it in God power of his own. He did it by doing the same things that he is giving us the capability of doing. That we, he even showed us that if we live by, like him, that we will have the same power he had because he also had God's power. Um, he's given that to us too. So today is um, uh, Palm where Jesus came into Jerusalem on a donkey. And <clears throat> And, you know, I wondered why. So I went and looked it up. 
And I know that people don't, you know, maybe back then, people just rode into town at different times and a donkey and the whole town gathered together and had palm branches all ready and, um, and they just waited for the guy to come in, whoever he was, and then throw stuff on the ground to make a carpet and, and praise and sing and jump up and down. Or, or maybe it was a, every so often on a particular date, some guy came in on a donkey or um, or maybe there was an event planner, you know, uh, like we have today. Somebody gets in there and calls all the towns in advance and tells them to pull, you know, cut this many pieces of palm branch and have this many people on the road and, you know, to where it's a big, a big planned event. But when I looked it up in the Old Testament, it says in Zechariah, nine nine through ten it mentioned why the king would ride in on a donkey instead of a war horse and the reason for that was that he was coming in peace and it wasn't a statement of um i'm going to get you it was a statement of in my power i am coming in peace i'm coming to you because because it's in peace, because it's a cool thing, okay? And there are other instances, like 1 Kings 1, 33, mentions Solomon riding on a donkey the day that he was recognized as the new king of Israel. Other instances of leaders riding on donkeys are in Judges 5, 10, 10, 14, and chapter 12, 14. And then 2 Samuel, Samuel, 16 um, It fits the, in Zechariah, it fits the description of a king who would be righteous and having salvation and gentle rather than to come in to conquer. And which brings me to an interesting thought for just a second. He came in on a donkey then, but when he comes back to get us, he's going to be on a white horse. It will be to conquer and to war to get his kids back. Just, just a powerful little note I thought I'd throw in there. He, his provision for us is so thorough. He loves us so much, knowing in advance what we are going to do. He still still came. He made it possible for us to come across to where he is, even if he had to come and give us his spirit, just like he did Jesus, that we could live the way our heart, you know, when Jesus is in us, that's the way we want to live. And so, so that we could live that way and be with him forever. But even at that, He's still now, even after Jesus is dead and risen and up in heaven and praying for us, he still suffers with us because we're still fighting him. And he still, today, this moment, comes in to call us into him to give us what we need to succeed, to give us power over the flesh, power over the law of sin and death to give us the ability to choose something different than what would be natural for us. To me, that's just, <sighs> it's interesting that he would do that, but it's absolutely humbling that he knew all of that. He not only knows the rules, he made the rules, rules. he knows he has to enforce the rules, he knows that we're prone to wickedness, to wandering, to rebellion and flesh. And yet he creates a way of love and a tender connection because we can't do it outside of ourselves. It can only happen through him in us to do what we cannot do. It's his fruit, his spirit, his being that flows through us to create those gifts of the spirit, the love, joy, peace long-suffering gentleness, 
um, kindness, goodness, self-control. Isaiah 52 says, Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Those things are what we just talked about. Those, the strength is his, and the garments is his righteousness that we gain by faith, by choosing to continue to allow his spirit to be what rules in us. Then it goes on to say, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Those who do not choose to have this connection, they will not be with us. They will, but, they, but there's not a moment that he's not working on giving everybody that same choice. Everyone will have it. But it says to us to put on his stuff, his, his righteous robe, it doesn't say righteous here, but it does other places, his beauty, the beautiful garment of his, and his strength, and to shake yourself from the dust. dust. Arise, O Jerusalem, loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter. Our, the law of sin changes, chains us. Like I said, we don't have power to set ourselves free from it. We can make moments, we can make little choices, but to remain that way, it takes a power greater than our own. And so he's saying that we can get out of the dust and we can shake that stuff off and we can come free now because he bought us. He, it goes on to explain other stuff too. Um, you, you have sold yourselves for nothing. We, sold, we sell ourselves into sin for nothing. We just give ourselves away without money and thus the Lord says it goes on in a bunch of other words that he's going to be the one that redeems us and if we want then we can come to be redeemed and have his spirit help us live through faith in him the way that we want to live with his spirit that's inside of us um, It's huge, and it's all by faith. I can't do it. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. Every time the law wins of, of sin wins, God's law lifts me back up and says, Come, I love you. I died for you. You're, you're free in me. Come, let me love you. That's my hope today is so that you will come. You will understand that the great war that you fight with all of the things that go on in your life, everything from grief to anger, whatever it is, that those things are there, but he's bigger. And he wants you to come and rest and love and be safe in his arms. I hope you choose that today. Thank you.